The topic here today is how to handle negative thinking and emotions. Now this is very important that we handle our negative thinking and emotions uh, because when we are affected by situations, by people, then we will say uh, things are difficult, I'm unhappy, uh, people are not nice to me. So we might be affected by people and our own emotions. And this happens to many people that their emotions are affected and then they become unhappy or angry. And uh, I had this experience when I first experienced the Holy Spirit in 1998. I was very happy because I experienced the joy of the Lord all the time and the motivation of the Lord all the time. I experienced His, His motivation and I, 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 and then I pray for people. Many people experience great changes. So I was very excited. But when I called up someone and told her about my experience, she was very unhappy because she uh, is not open to the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And she, she was very angry and he uh, hung up the phone on me. And then, and then after that, when I uh, tried to pray, I found that I had no joy. I cannot have the joy that I have all the time since I experienced the Holy Spirit. So I said, something is wrong. I have to handle it. So I called her up, up again and I said, if I made you unhappy, I'm sorry about it. Now I did not do anything wrong. So I, I did not say I've done something wrong. But I said, if I made you unhappy, I'm sorry about it. But she was still, she was still uh, unhappy and she was very angry and she hung up on the phone again. And then the Holy Spirit told me, you have handled it and you can just relax. And then when I pray, I have the joy of the Lord again and the Holy Spirit told me that from now on if anyone affects you if you are affected emotionally in any way uh, then you can uh, always handle it and don't let negative people or difficult ex situations affect you it's more important to keep the joy of the Lord and the peace of the Lord and the motivation of the Lord and not to be affected by people because people are affected by the sins and the negative emotions so I don't have to be affected by them so I uh, what happened was I you know from then on I learned not to be affected by people I learned to uh, put down the problems of people and then uh, I will listen to them I will respond to them but I don't let people affect my thinking and emotions but many people in the difficult situation they will say oh things are hopeless and uh, I'm not doing well and uh, people are against me and then they think that uh, things are too difficult. So we want to handle our negative thinking and emotions so that we can keep the peace and the joy of the Lord all the time. Okay, and then... Um, okay, now, so the, uh, in Proverbs 4.23, it says that above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. So everything everything in our life flows from our heart if we are unhappy if we are negative it will affect our performance affect our ministry and everything so everything a whole life uh, some people are they they can bless many people some people they their whole life is blessed by god because they guard their hearts but some people they get angry easily they get frustrated easily or they get sad easily and then they uh, they will lose motivation they um, they don't want to be nice to people so this uh, the negative thinking and emotions will affect the whole life and then uh, then they won't be able to do great things for God so if we want to do great things for God it's very important that we guard our heart and our our, our emotions Okay, and joy heals us and sadness hurts us. Proverbs 17.22 A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. So when we have a cheerful heart, it is good medicine. It will heal our heart. It will heal our body. And a crushed spirit, a spirit that is defeated, that is sad, that is unhappy, dries up the bone, dries up the body, and dries up our emotions. So we, we want to keep a joyful spirit so that we have strength all the time and we have motivation all the time. I've known 
many Christians and even pastors lose the motivation when they are affected by people. So we want to learn to take care of our thinking and emotions. And some people say this is unnatural. This is now I, I say yes, th this is unnatural because naturally people are affected by the thinking and emotions, but it's not doing good. But if we learn to realize that our thinking and emotions uh, cannot control us, but we want to manage our thinking and emotions, and our thinking and emotions will affect our whole life. So it is very important to learn to manage our thinking and emotions. And the excuses of many people having negative thinking and emotions. Why do people, many people have negative thinking and emotions? Because they have excuses. The first excuse, someone hurts me, so I have to be angry. They say, someone hurts me, so I have to be unhappy uh, because he hurt me. But if he hurts me, it is his problem. His problem, I don't have to bear his problems. I don't have to carry his problems. It's his problem. So I can try to calm him down. I can try to be nice to him. But I don't have to be affected by him. So even if someone hurts me, we don't have to be affected by them. And uh, not a long ago, ago today, earlier today, someone sent me a very negative message on, uh, on uh, Facebook Messenger. And uh, I just disregarded it because it's his problem. It's not my problem. He's unhappy because of something. It's not my problem. So I just let it go. I just, I don't want to carry that negative emotions when I'm serving God or any time. I don't want to uh, lose my peace and, and uh, joy of the Lord. And I want to stay in the joy and the peace of the Lord all the time. And then some excuses are my family or my work has problems, so I have to worry. Now they think if someone is sick at home or there is financial problem, they have to worry. But worry doesn't change anything, and worry only cuts our, you know, uh, stops our relationship with God. It, uh, and then it's hard to have strength from the Lord. So we want to say, Lord, you will take care of things. I just let it go. And I just trust in you, and I uh, uh, put my trust in you. Okay, and then some people say God does not help me, so I have to complain. Now this is a a lie. Many people think they think if their problem is not solved, it's because God doesn't help them. It doesn't mean that because we all face difficulties. It doesn't mean God doesn't help us because living in this life here now, we have difficulties. We have physical difficulties, we have uh, difficulties with people, some people don't accept us, some people don't accept uh, the Christian message, it's their problem. I don't have to carry the problem. And it doesn't mean God doesn't help me. If I have financial problem, it doesn't mean God doesn't help me. God is still helping me. And if I continue trusting God, He will find a way to help me. So uh, now, from time to time, we have difficulties. For instance, Paul has been persecuted by many people, and he had difficult times. He has been, you know, um, <coughs> in the <coughs> in the sea for a long time. So he he you know he faced difficult different different difficulties, but he <coughs> chose not to be affected by the difficulties because he. He believed that God helps me, him all the time, even when there are difficulties. So uh, when there are difficulties, it doesn't mean God doesn't help me. And then four, then some people said, I was born to be emotional. I'm always unhappy. I'm always angry. I'm always depressed. Now, this is a lie. It's a habit that people build up when they grow up. Now, a lot of time is because their family members are not nice to them. And then they take it personally. They take all the hurts internally, and then they have the habit of being unhappy all the time. But this is something we can manage after we become a Christian. After we become a Christian, we can say, I can let it go, I can put down my burdens and worries. Okay? So Paul was in great difficulties and he still rejoiced. So he was put in prison and he still praised God. So we can choose our emotions 
and emotions depend on internal factors, not on external factors. It depends on how we handle it, not on external factors. Okay, now emotions are signal lights to distress. When we are unhappy, then there are signal lights lighting. It affects us. And, but the signal lights should not be on all the time. Now, we all have, you know, if someone hurt us, then it's very easy for us to be unhappy. But we don't have to be unhappy for the whole day or for a long time. We can manage it as soon as possible. We'll say, is this problem? If I've done anything wrong, I'll apologize. I will try to correct it. And I, I don't have to continue to feel bad. So the signal, the emotion, negative emotions should not be on all the time. Okay, now here is the downward spiral of emotions. So when we have negative emotions, it would affect, affect us. So when people have, uh, they are oversensitive to stress uh, and it, it trigger different things, it will, they will have make bad decisions. And then they will have more stress and more bad decisions and more stress. And it keep going down and then it go uh, down more and more. So when people, they are unhappy, they yell at people and then they make bad decisions and then they hurt people and then they uh, broke, uh, break up relationship and then they are affected and then they feel more unhappy. And then the more unhappy they are, they will do worse things. Some people would hurt someone else or some people even try to commit suicide when they feel unhappy. So uh, when we stay uh, when we continue to be unhappy, it will affect us eventually, affect the whole person. So we don't want to be affected by our negative emotions. So here is another downward spiral of emotions. When people have fatigue, when they are very tired, they are easily agitated. Now when we are tired, we can rest. Even when we are tired, we should not be angry with people. We can say, I rejoice in the Lord, I trust in the Lord, so I have more peace. So whenever we lose our peace, we want to pray, we want to relax, so that we have the peace again before we want to handle situations and people. And then they become busy, very busy doing things. Now this is not uh, doing business, but being busy all the time. And they, they are overwhelmed by the, all the things they have to do and then they are anxious they become they have anxiety and then poor thinking and more uh, busy feeling and then insomnia they cannot sleep well and then uh, more fatigue more tired and then poor thinking and then they melt down the whole person melts down and blow up so when people don't control that uh, don't manage. It's best to use the word manage. Manage the negative thinking and emotions. They will go down more and more. Now this don't help us when we are emotional. When we are emotional, these things don't help us. When people keep thinking about the problem or the person that affects our emotions. So if people keep thinking about this person hurt me, oh the financial problem and keep thinking about it, oh the people are not uh, listening to God, and uh, it's no use, you know, when people th keep thinking of the, about the problem, it's not going to help anyone. And then they keep thinking that we are miserable. They say, well, it's miserable, it's too difficult, uh, th there's no hope. And keep thinking it's unfair, someone hurts me, so it's unfair. Now, it is inevitable that people hurt us. It's, it will happen from time to time, people will hurt us. But when people hurt us, it doesn't mean I have to continue to feel unhappy. So it's, now even though it's unfair, in this world there are many things that are unfair, but it doesn't mean that I have to continue to feel bad. I don't have to continue to, to say it's hopeless, I'm unhappy, we don't have to, even when it's unfair. So there are times that we hurt people, then we we should apologize to the people and be nice to people and, and uh, try to make up, uh, build up the relationship again. But when people hurt us, we want to say, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Uh, even if they hurt us, even if it's unfair, I want to be nice to them. 
And then it doesn't help when people think of a plan of revenge. They try to find ways to revenge and do something bad back to that person. It's only going to hurt him more. And then also build up hatred or self-pity. They, they hate the people or they say, Oh, I'm useless. I cannot do anything. I'm unhappy. And then they have more and more more and more and uh, self-pity or they complain to God they say God you're not helping me uh, and then I don't want to follow you that is uh, that's not right it's it's going to block the relationship with God it's not going to help so when we have problem we don't want to make the problems worse now this can help us when we are emotional deep breath take a deep breath relax take a drink a nap and some exercise this can help us to calm down to put down the negative thinking and emotions and talk to God about our problems and emotions and say Lord I have these difficulties please help me give me strength give me peace help me to calm down so it's helpful to talk to God and sometimes it's it's good to praise God oh thank you Lord and number three sing praises to God or dance to God hallelujah praise the Lord you're wonderful hallelujah that way we have more strength and then four express our emotions to someone mature not gossiping and to and the person responds with acceptance now only <clears throat> only to someone mature if we know someone mature who is a mature Christian that can help us and we don't gossip we just say I'm unhappy now I've been hurt by someone and I feel very unhappy now we don't have to gossip and say negative things about that person we just say i'm affected by this person right now i'm unhappy now uh, please pray for me or uh, this person will listen to us and comfort us so uh, this human acceptance is very important so if we see our spouse our children our co-worker our church members they are unhappy we don't want to condemn them we will say it's okay uh, I care about you you can tell me what happened and I'll pray for you and then we accept them it's very important to accept them and say okay I understand that you have this uh, negative emotions it's it's okay don't uh, uh, don't worry about it and uh, God is going to help you that way uh, the person would feel more peaceful you know I know you're unhappy I know you're affected by this and God is helping you and I'm helping you too and then manage our thinking and emotions manage it that we say okay it's someone else's problem or if I've done something wrong it's my problem so I apologize and I try to correct it and I don't have to uh, keep having negative thinking and I don't have to f continue to feel unhappy I can rejoice in the Lord I can count his blessing thank you Lord for all the blessings you have given me I can praise you and thank you hallelujah and then we can have peace again so we need to learn the habit of praising God and having peace from God and then number six we appreciate our own effort to improve so we say oh I have tried to improve I applaud myself thank God I'm help I'm trying to trust in God to manage the problem thank God I'm, I'm trying to manage it so we can appreciate and applaud our own effort uh, that way it will give us strength instead of saying oh it's no use it's not going to help instead we say oh I have tried thank God I've tried it's God who moves me to try and I've tried and I've learned to put down the problem so I'm doing well today thank God thank God and applaud ourselves okay now there is a cognitive model of uh, emotion management that will help us it's called the ABC uh, theory A is adversity uh, or activating event that's something that happened that caused us to be unhappy and the belief is what affects us for instance someone is not nice uh, for instance here here I didn't get elected uh, selected for the choir and then the belief I have a, a terrible voice I'm, I'm never going to be a very good uh, to be very good at singing so if someone 
have negative thinking, oh, I have a terrible voice, I'm no use, then the consequence he is uh, she will feel sad and she will give up on pra practicing, practicing singing. So when people have negative thinking, they will have negative emotions. But if the person has positive thinking, he says, okay, I can work on it, I can improve it. Now, if God has given me the gift to sing or to play music, and even though I'm not very good now, I can still improve. And uh, it's okay now that I'm not good enough. Then, uh, then he's managed, he manages his emotions and then he say, okay, it's okay now that uh, I, I'm not selected for the choir. I can keep working on my voice and then in the future I can do better. And then they will have better emotions. So it's very important to have the right belief. Uh, this is very important. The right belief will produce positive emotions and manage our negative emotions. And bad beliefs will bring about uh, negative emotions. And, uh, for instance, someone yells at us and then we say, Oh, nobody likes me, I'm no good, people don't like me, and then those are negative thinking. And then what happens is then the person will feel more and more unhappy. So we want to avoid the negative thinking. The negative thinking comes from the world. It comes from the world. comes from our pride or our self-pity. But we want to have positive thinking from the Bible. The Bible tells us that we are important. God loves me. God helps me. God is blessing me. God tries to help me. And whenever I trust in Him, God is very happy. So this is positive thinking. And the positive thinking in Jesus will bring about positive emotions. Okay, and then uh, these three things affect us. First is our self. If a person says, I'm ugly, I'm worthless, I'm a failure, then it will affect his whole person. So the self is very important that we keep our self healthy and biblical, following the biblical principle. And then the future, and then he thinks about the future. I'm hopeless because things will always be this way, that, that he thinks there is no hope. And the world and uh, it's not it's affecting him. So he says, oh, no one loves me. Then he ha thinks he has a pure, poor future. So his self affects the whole person. But if we manage ourself and say, God loves me, and I'm important in God's sight. God has a plan in my life. And I'll, when I follow God, things will get better and better. That way, we'll have, uh, we'll not be affected by the world. We have to say no to the garbage in the world. When people say negative things, those are garbage. We have to say no to the garbage. And then we'll have a positive view of the future. Okay, and the five steps to victory to have positive thinking and positive emotions. First, aware. Now, we have talked about this uh, five steps to victory in uh, managing our, uh, the sins we have or anything or relationship with people. This five step to victory is very uh, helpful. So first is aware, aware of our negative thinking and emotions and believe that negative thinking and emotions are destructive. So the key word is destructive. And then the third uh, apply biblical principles. So the key word is Bible. So what does the Bible tell me to do? And then pray. The fourth word is pray. To have forgiveness from God because we have, we have uh, negative thinking or negative emotions. And then for strength. And then choose uh, to have positive thinking and emotions. So choose to obey. The key word is obey. Obey. Choose to obey. So first we become aware that we have negative thinking and emotions uh, when we say, oh, I'm unhappy, I'm affected by someone, I'm thinking negatively, then we are aware of our problem. And then we believe that it's destructive. And then what does the Bible say? The Bible says that God is loving me, God helps me. In God, there is always hope. And God always opens a way for me to have victory. So the, the Bible tells me to trust in God and have the joy of the Lord. 
and pray for forgiveness. Please forgive me and give me strength to have peace and joy and not to be affected by people. And then obey, choose to obey. That I want to think positively about myself. I want to have positive emotions. I want to be joyful and peaceful. Thank you, Lord, for, uh, for your strength, for your help. Now, it's very important when we are emotional that we stop doing things. We pray to God. We enjoy God's presence. <clears throat> we come to God for help and strength. <clears throat> and we relax in Him. Lord, thank you, Lord. And, and have prayer of peace and love from God. Lord, you are loving me. You are helping me. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Think of the love of God. And then we just relax in God. Thank you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for being with me. And then we'll have peace again before we have uh, uh, handle our problems or people. So these are positive thinking in Jesus. When we have this positive thinking, then it's easier for us to have positive emotions. First, God loves me strongly all the time. Even when we are disobedient, God still loves me. And God is willing to forgive me when I confess my sins. So even when we sin, God still loves me. God wants to uh, forgive me and give me strength. So God loves me strongly. That's very important. Many people think, I, I am not doing well, therefore God doesn't love me. That, that's not true. God loves me even when we are not doing well. Now, but God is not pleased with us when we are not doing well. That's two things are different. God loves us no matter what. But God is not pleased with us when we sin. And then when we repent, God is very happy whenever we repent. Some people think they have to really do very well before God is pleased with them. That's not true. When we start to repent, God, the whole heaven will rejoice. And when we pray to God for help, God is very happy. So anytime we come to God for, for help and for strength, God is always very help, uh, happy. God loves us strongly all the time, not because of our goodness, but because He is love. God is love. His nature is love. And then too, God has a wonderful plan in our lives. We are very precious in God's sight. So we always believe that, that God has a wonderful plan in my life. We are precious, we are important. Now this is not being proud. Everyone is important in God's kingdom. Everyone is important. So I, I believe that I'm precious in God's sight. Number three, even if we have sinned much, God still wants us back. When we repent, He is super happy. So uh, even when we have sinned much and sinned seriously, God still wants us back. God still loves us. And then when we repent, He's very, very happy. So whenever we sin, uh, now, uh, many Christians, they do it like this. When they sin, they say, I don't want to come to God now. I don't want to pray to God now because I have sinned much. And then they are, uh, avoid, when they avoid God, what happens is then they don't have the forgiveness of God and then they will feel worse and worse. But when we sin, Instead of feeling bad all the time, we come to God because God is the Savior of great sinners. Now, many people have problem believing that they are great sinners. They think, you know, uh, we are good, we are very good. Now, uh, it's, it's true we have goodness, but our, we also have a sinful nature. So we need to believe that we are great sinners. We can really sin, we can really commit serious sins. So we have to be careful with our, our behavior, with our thinking, that we want to avoid sins. So people don't believe that they are uh, a, a great sinners. And then when they commit sin, and then they say, I'm too terrible, God will not forgive me. And then they would, uh, dare, they would uh, not dare to come to God. It's very important at that time that we come to God and say, Lord, I have sinned against you, but I know that you are very happy when I come back to you and for repent uh, for forgiveness, and you are happy to forgive me. So we need to really believe that. That's what the Bible promises, that every sin can be forgiven by God. And the Bible talks about only the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit cannot be forgiven. 
But if someone has committed the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, he does not, he does not want to repent at all. He does not want to turn back to God for forgiveness. If a person wants to come, God, come to God for forgiveness, then he already has the Holy Spirit inside him. Then he still, uh, he still has not committed the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Number four, God can help us to live a joyful and fruitful life. He continues to help us. If we stay in Him, we will make His plan come true. So God can help us to have a joyful and fruitful life. He wants to help us. He wants to give us that uh, a joyful life. Every Christian has the potential in Jesus to have a joyful life and a fruitful life, to bless many people and to be full of the fruits of the Holy Spirit and full of the fruits of uh, ministry. Every Christian can be fruitful. So, and He continues to help us. God continues to help us. If we stay in Him, He will make us His plan come true in us, His wonderful plan. So, it will, uh, God wants His plan to come true in our life. And number five, God doesn't mind how weak we are. Uh, he can give us strength and wisdom. So, God doesn't mind how weak we are. When we are weak, we just come to God for strength and then we can have strength again. So even when we are weak, God doesn't mind. So we come to God, God, please help me. And then God will always be happy with us and give us strength and wisdom. Okay, so we can rejoice in God even when things go very wrong. Now many people think that uh, they, you know, when things go wrong and then they cannot be joyful. Habakkuk 3.17-18 to 18, talk about the situation is really bad. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruits be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. So Habakkuk has this faith in God. Even when things go wrong, everything goes wrong, he still rejoices in the Lord and he'll be joyful in the God of his salvation, that we are joyful even when things go wrong. So these are different belief systems. So when things go wrong and then we have positive thinking, Be belief is a thinking, you know, that we believe, we think, we know that God is blessing me, then we have joy. Uh, God is still blessing me even when there is difficulty so I don't have to feel bad. But if a person, when things go wrong and then they don't believe in God, then the, there is a problem with the belief system. When he doesn't believe in God, then he'll feel sad. So when, for instance, we preach a sermon and we're not happy with the sermon, and then we'll say, oh, I'm no use, I have no use, I, I'm not doing well. Then we'll feel bad. But we'll say, we accept ourselves, okay, everyone uh, will make mistakes. I did not do so well this time, it's okay, I can work on it, I can be better. And then there is hope. Whenever we give ourselves hope in Jesus, then it's positive thinking. Whenever we take away hope and say there is no hope, and, and we say it's terrible, then it's negative thinking. Now we want to do, to have positive thinking in ourselves, and we want to give positive thinking toward people too. We want to tell people that even though you have uh, committed a sin, or you have done something wrong, it doesn't matter. You can ask for forgiveness and God will give you hope, and there's always hope in Jesus. There's always hope that He's always for sure He will forgive you when re you repent and He will help you to go back up again. So always give people hope instead of uh, taking away the hope. So when people have done something wrong, we, want, we don't want to yell at them and say, and shout at them and say, it's terrible that you did something wrong. We don't want to take away the joy and the hope of people. We want to be always giving people hope and joy. Okay, and then thinking about God's goodness changed the thinking and the emotions. Now, Psalm 77 is a psalm 
talking about the psalmist being very unhappy. He was unhappy that even when he remembered God, I remembered God, Psalm 77 verse 3, and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. So he was in a very depressed condition. So the psalmist was very honest to admit his, uh, his depression. And verse 9, Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his tender mercies? So he has this internal management. So has God forgotten to be gracious to me and he is angry? Uh, uh, in his anger, he, sh he shut up his tender mercies. And I said, this is my weakness. So I said, this is my weakness, my problem. But I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the years of the right hand. The right hand means he, he did wonderful things for me. I remember all the years that He did wonderful things to me. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. So the psalmist turned and remembered all the good things of God. So this is what we can do. Even when we are sad, when we are unhappy, we don't want to continue to feel sad. We, don't, we want to change our sadness. We want to think about God's goodness and relax in God and say, God is helping me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, I have talked about three kinds of prayer to build up a relationship with God. The first kind is uh, prayer of grace, to declare the grace of God from God to us. He loves me. He cares about me. He has a wonderful plan in, in my life. He wants to do great things in my life. And so we thank God for that. Thank God for your love. Thank you for uh, uh, being with me. And then prayer worship is from us to God. I worship you. I love you. I adore you. And then interactive prayer is believing that whenever we pray, He is happy. So putting these two together, whenever I pray, I know that He is happy and He is blessing me. Now He might not respond to me according to my request. Sometimes you know I say, Please give me some money now. God might not give the money right away. But God has a plan to help us trust in Him first. In our difficult times, we learn to trust in God. And then we see God provides for us. And then we say, when I trust in God, He will help us. So I have, um, I have times that I was very low financially. But I said, God, you must have a way. You have a way to help me. And I trust. Keep trusting in God and God help me through those difficult times. So always believe that God is helping us and trusting God this. And then when I trust in God, God is very happy. This is interactive prayer. Whenever I pray to Him, honestly, with a, uh, with a pure heart, He is very happy with me. Now some people say, my heart is not pure. Then you say, Lord, help me to have a pure heart to love you. And then God is very happy. Whenever we're not doing well, we say, God, please help me. And then God is happy. So I hope we remember this prayer, interactive prayer. Whenever we follow God according to His way, whenever we repent, whenever we trust in God, whenever we pray to God, whenever we uh, worship Him and love Him and obey Him and serve Him with an honest heart, He's always happy. Now some people serve God uh, with a secret motives for his own benefit then it's not a pure motive but if we want to say God is so wonderful I want to serve him that is a pure motive then God is happy so whenever we say yes I want to pray to God I trust in God God is wonderful that is a pure motive and then God is very happy so I hope we all believe that when we have a pure motive God is always happy when we have an honest motive God is always happy with us. And then God makes us very special people. Now here I show you the ABC theory. 